I am Mary Ann Thigason. My talk is study design. The best model for a cat is a cat. Not a dog. As you can see here in this picture, there are two black animals. Are they both cats? Or is one a dog? Beginnings. When you begin a study, you want to know something. You're curious about something. You want to solve a problem. Make something better. What if? What if I do this? What happens? The first thing you should do is research prior work. Find out what all has been done in the area that you have a question where you want to know something. Find out what it, other people have done before you. Kinds of data. Um, there's categorical data and continuous data. Knowing the difference between the two is important for statistical analysis. It's also important when you set up gathering data that you keep in mind what kind of data it is and you set everything up for it. So examples of categorical data are feral, fixed, and fur color. They are all distinct variables <coughs> that have no, that are measured as items. Continuous. Continuous variables are measured on the continuum, like age and weight and length of body. Types of data. Types of data in R. R has special values. It uses NA for missing value, which is different than SPSS, which uses minus 9. N, A, N is not a number in R. In inf, when you get an inf return, it's basically telling you you tried to do something impossible like divide by zero. Variables. Um, R, like most statistics programs, wants to deal with numbers, not text or string. So you... Um, it's traditionally called dummy variables in statistics, but you can also call it aliasing, like when you alias a, va a value to something else. Gender is often uh, presented in columns of data as male and female, but you cannot use that to do statistical tests. You need to um, recode it as zero and one. Here is an example of Spock doing his happy kitty dance. This is how I identify what my variables are. They come from real things, not made up things. He has a tail, a length of body, legs, claws, fur color, and eye color. Properties and numbers. Cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. Cardinal numbers are talking about what the number is, like one, two, three. Ordinal numbers are concerned with its order, like first, second, third. Again, what kind, what property your numbers has plays a little into what type of statistical tests you do. So what is going on here? I did the summary command in R on my data set on the variable fur color. I get a min of 1 and a max of 5 and a medium of 2.38. This doesn't make any sense. Um, fur color is a categorical variable and this test, a summary, is for continuous variables. Here is the correct way to present that information. We have five different bars to the heights of how many um, cats have those colors in our set of data that we observed. Cats. Here. So I know it when I see it. How do you tell the difference between I guess it was. 
I know it when I see it. How do you tell the difference between a cat or a dog? Which is a good question. In an observational study, it's hard to tell the difference observing. So here are two animals. One is black, one is white. Here are two animals, both are black. Is color how I'm going to tell the difference between cats and dogs? The taxonomy of a cat. Kingdom, Amelia, phylum, Chordata, class, Mammalia, order, Carnivora, family, Fidea. Here's where dogs branch off. Canidae, genus, Felis, for dogs is Canis, species, Felis catus, or for dogs, Canis lupus, down to their common names of cat and dog. As you can see in the taxonomy, they're very similar until they get down to the family. Um, it's easy from observation to observe um, that it's an animal, that it has a backbone, that it's a mammal, that it's a carnivore. But then it gets harder to tell the difference between the two. Types of study. There are experimental studies and observational studies. You can obs an observational study can be done backwards. You can look at all the historical data that's available, or you can pick out what data you want to follow forward. Statistical power. R has a couple packages for measuring statistical power. One is the package PWR and the other one is package sampling. Sampling is mostly used in um, bootstrapping. Studies. For my, I'm going to do three example studies. One is a cat feeding experiment. One is a case control study observing at, outdoor cats. And one is a cohort study where I do an intervention of fixing outdoor cats and ask the question what is the effect on of fixing them on outdoor cat population. The cat feeding experiment. Goal is stable weight cat. I have three factors that I'm going to measure wet food, dry food, and both. I'm going to keep the environment the same, same spot, same time of day, same amount and calories of each type of food. Measure it over time, weigh the cat weekly and see which one gives me a stable weight for my cat. Case control study, an observational study. Population is divided into cases and controls. Cases have what you are studying, controls do not. Exposure status is not determined by the researcher. So, yeah. in my outdoor study, this is called SIPOC. SIPOC is a tool from Six Sigma where you put the process in the middle, and my process is cat population. My inputs are neighborhood cats, and my outputs are fixed cats, less kittens, stable population. The customers of the outputs are the cats and the neighbors. My ex this gives me my x variables of gender, fixed, and feral, and my y variable of cat population. Here are some outdoor cats. I think it's best to just study these cats by observing them. I don't think I'm going to be able to get them in my cohort study. This is called a cause and effect or nicknamed fish diagram in Six Sigma. Um, the head of it is my goal of cat population. The lines coming off have the factors and the levels of the factors that affect my cat population. I have has clause, feral, and fixed. 
This is the R code to make that um, diagram. The um, SSC diagram function at the bottom comes from the package Six Sigma. Here is the first four lines of my data set and data table in R from observing the cats. I have the length of body, their weights in pounds, their age, whether or not they have claws, fer feral, if they're fixed, their fur color, which is coded as numbers, gender is numbers, and how many legs they have. Here is the code to generate the data set. R has the ability to generate data sets with parameters such as distributions so you can get sample data to test out your code or to test out functions that is fairly close to real data. When you first get a data set it's good to do an overview of your data to see what you have to make sure it's what you wanted and what's going on with it. Um, library I like to use is the package psych. A technique I like to do is vectorization. I take the um, variable name data cat, make it an object, I point it to my uh, data frame and then I can do a function on just the object instead of putting in the entire data frame. Here is an example described from the package psych. I call it on the variable age and I get a bunch of parameters back. I especially like getting my standard error which is SC at the end. It's useful for um, other calculations. Here's another outdoor cat and another outdoor cat. Participants in my study. Cohort study. An observational study. Divide the cats into two groups. An intervention of fixing one group and follow the cats over time. So at this point, Magellan here says, you have to ask me if you're going to do an intervention. Which leads us to informed consent. Um, whenever you study people or animals, you have to tell them what it is they're, you're going to do, what the outcomes are, what's going to happen to them. So for people there, and for animal studies, there's an IRB, which is the Institutional Review Board, it, which is designed to approve, monitor, and review human research at institutions. They require you, after they approve a study, to have a consent form that t explains exactly what's going to happen, that your, um, who you're going to study has to sign. Um, and then for animals, we also have the Animal Welfare Act. Um, and in Canada, they have the three R's, replacement, reduction, and refinement, good animal practice and science in Canada. In Oregon, animal cruelty laws cover animals. Um, there's not much in Oregon animal cruelty laws about cats. The main thing is that they have fresh water, they're fed, and have a good environment. And then, after we've collected the data, we need to analyze it. This talk ends here. Analyzing data is another talk. But Magellan is all for analyzing data.
like to end with, always be curious. Always look for, look and see what's out there, what can I learn more about, explore. Thank you.